Let's start at the end of the week with what you told us last week was the most important indicator that we should be looking at in the economy, and that is the employment cost index. It came in, it came in above survey. David, we, we weren't sure what was going to be happening with uh, wage inflation. We hoped that the indications in some of the monthly surveys that earnings growth was slowing and that that might slow the whole inflation process would materialize. That didn't happen. Looks like inflation is running at a pretty stable rate. It's still two and a half points at least above where it was before this whole episode uh, started. Uh, it depends on just how you look at the figures, but really no evidence of a significant decline. If you look at the private sector and you take out benefits, then it's uh, going up a bit. If you look at the 12-month figure, it's going up a bit. Those may be the wrong things uh, to do, so it may be better to look at the overall figure. But I think it's showing what I've been saying for quite some time now, which is that we are an ingrained moderate to high inflation uh, economy. Nothing like 9% inflation is built in, but inflation above four looks to be pretty securely built in. And if productivity growth doesn't accelerate, it could be uh, worse than that uh, quite easily. So I'm pretty uncomfortable with uh, the current uh, situation. And I think it just points to uh, the difficulties that the Fed uh, is facing going forward and confirms the broad diagnosis that we have an overheated economy that's not going to fix itself. And therefore, we're not likely to get out of this uh, excess inflation situation without having a recession. So, so, Larry, you have been steadfast on this program and elsewhere uh, on your views about inflation. And yet there's something of a debate going on right now behind, between, on the one hand, the markets and on the other hand, economists, with the markets sort of saying, OK, the Fed will hike for a while and then they'll start backing off next year. And actually, we'll have some reductions in 2023. But the economists say, boy, the economy doesn't look that way. We're going to have to keep going and keep it pretty high. What do you do when you have that kind of debate? Yeah, we'll see what judgment the Fed make, makes. Uh, the challenge they're going to have, and it's a agonizing challenge, and it's why it would be better if we weren't in the kind of configuration we were in, and it would be better if we had not overstimulated uh, the economy last year, is that on the one hand, I think you are likely to see a significant slowdown in growth. You are likely to see recessionary forces develop over the next year. And on the other hand, it's going to take a lot to get the inflation out of the system. The danger, David, is that they don't uh, persevere strongly enough in restrictive policy. And that's what gets you a stagflation situation where growth slows and you don't beat the inflation out of the system. It's like if you don't complete your course of antibiotics and then your illness comes back and the drugs are bacteria resistant. On the other hand, I, I don't think we can deny that if they do what's necessary to contain uh, inflation, then it's not going to be a happy economic situation uh, over, uh, some, over some interval. Secretary Yellen said yesterday that she held out the prospect of uh, getting out of this without unemployment uh, going above uh, five. I've got enormous respect for her as an economist, but I have to say that statement uh, greatly surprised me. It didn't surprise me as much as the Fed saying we were going to get out of this with 4.1 percent uh, unemployment. But I don't see any basis for thinking that either of those statements is a reasonable uh, prediction, given what we know. My own research uh, with Olivier Blanchard, uh, looking carefully at vacancy statistics, looking carefully at quit statistics, would suggest that 
just to get to a neutral posture with respect to uh, inflation, we're going to have to take unemployment up towards five. And in order to bring down inflation, we're going to have to be restrictive, which means an unemployment rate above five. So, Larry, you mentioned some of the questions about the neutral unemployment rate we heard about from Secretary Young. We also heard about uh, where we were with a neutral rate on interest rates from Jay Powell. What do you economists do when you put together these neutral rates? Look, I think Jay Powell said things that, to be blunt, were analytically indefensible. He claimed twice in his press conference that the Fed was now at the neutral uh, interest rate calling it two and a half. It's elementary that the level of the neutral interest rate depends upon the inflation rate. We've got on the most quoted measure, a 9.1 percent inflation measure. If you extrapolate it off core or something, it's four or five uh, percent uh, inflation. There is no conceivable way that a two and a half percent interest rate in an economy inflating like this is anywhere near neutral. And if you think it is neutral, you are misjudging the posture of policy in a fundamental way. So I was very sorry uh, to hear him uh, say that and frankly surprised. He said back in 2018 that the neutral interest rate, that the Fed was approaching the neutral interest rate at a time when uh, the inflation rate was 1.9 percent. How he could be saying the same thing uh, today when the inflation rate is where it is, is inexplicable uh, to me. And it's the same kind of, to be blunt, wishful thinking that got us into the problems we have now with the use of the term uh, transitory. So I hope the rigor of the economic analysis uh, at the Federal Reserve is going to step up. So, Larry, in the meantime, we have uh, some legislation coming out of uh, Capitol Hill, something perhaps we didn't even expect. We had the CHIPS Act, but now we have this proposed Inflation Reduction Act. Uh, last week on this program, you sent a powerful message to people who were saying increasing taxes actually might be inflationary. You said that's really not true at all. Uh, I suspect one of the people you were communicating with may have been Joe Manchin through Wall Street Week. I don't want to ask you about what you've said specifically specifically Joe Manchin, but give us your reaction to what the proposal is now that's come up with respect to increasing taxes, yes, paying for it, but also addressing climate. I was glad to see the bill. I think it's going to reduce the rate of inflation because it's going to reduce deficits and demand over time because it's going to use the federal government's power to negotiate lower prices for pharmaceuticals and because it's going to increase uh, supply of uh, energy. So demand, supply, pricing power, all working to reduce inflation. I think it's going to help the environment uh, because of the climate change measures. I think it's going to help fairness uh, in our country because of the expansions in uh, health care availability. I think it's going to help fairness in our country by closing uh, some very important tax loopholes that allow very profitable companies to avoid paying uh, any, uh, any taxes. Could the bill be uh, improved? Uh, of course. I was really sorry to see that the very important uh, enabling legislation for the international tax agreements that Secretary Yellen has uh, negotiated didn't get included in this. And while I was glad to see progress in reducing the carried interest uh, loophole. Frankly, there's still some loopholes uh, in uh, the solution. I think we should be saying that all carried interest, when realized, is taxed as ordinary income when the investor uh, takes it out. And this bill is still well short of that in a variety of respects.